Okay, great. Well, good morning, everybody. That was, uh, that was a nice synopsis, Aaron. Um, so today we're going to talk about traumatic brain injury using this um, case as sort of a, a launching point. And we're going to talk about various elements um, of traumatic brain injury. We're going to focus primarily on focus primarily on, on the acute pathophysiology of brain injury. And as soon as we figure out how to get our slides going. The, um, what we're going to focus basically on are, are uh, various elements of the pathophysiology along a time course. And we'll get to the slide where we show the time course of uh, traumatic brain injury because the, the time course actually plays a significant role in the ongoing evolution of events. We'll, we'll start a little bit with the start a little bit with the overall um, overview of traumatic brain injury. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about the uh, an overview. We'll talk a little bit about the types of traumatic brain injury. Um, and then we will go through uh, the key elements of the pathophysiology of traumatic brain injury. And this patient actually displays several of them. Um, um, we're, we're not going to make it, we don't have enough time really today, but we're going to go through and order sort of in progressive sequences of lectures, go through each of the guidelines, uh, go through the use of brain monitoring for the treatment of these patients to sort of go beyond the guidelines. Uh, eventually work towards guidelines for surgical therapy, surgical treatment as well, and then talk about prognosis and outcomes in TBI. So really we're going to only go through the first three of these uh, today, hopefully, if we have time. So traumatic brain injury is a very common problem. I think it's important to understand that this is, this is a huge problem. There are two million uh, brain injuries per year in the U.S., which is much larger really than a lot of other kinds of things that we deal with. It's extremely common. And there is sort of a progression of severity. So there, most of these injuries are sort of mild injuries, mild to even moderate injuries, or concussions. And there are types of concussions. Uh, so we think about this in severity, mild, moderate, severe, with concussion being the least um, um, severe, if you will. Uh, we see in the hospital, we see uh, you know, between 300 and 400,000 patients per year um, who come to get hospitalized and then move on to various forms of care. So it's, it's significant. There are about uh, 500 to 600,000 strokes per year. There are 30,000 subarachnoid hemorrhages. So this is much more common. It's orders of magnitude more common than subarachnoid hemorrhage. Sorry, Dr. Gonzalez. Uh, <laughs> so there are various forms of causes of traumatic brain injury, auto accidents, falls, sports injuries, um, uh, falling off your bicycle and, and various kinds of uh, events. Some of these are induced and some of these are not. Um, there's also penetrating. Well, we, we're not going to talk about penetrating today. But it's important to sort of look at the classification of brain injury and talk about concussion, mild, moderate, and severe. And these are the, the classical definitions when we talk about mild, moderate, and severe. Now, there's debate about this. There's debate that this is not the right classification, that we need a better classification scheme, a scheme that takes into consideration brain imaging, uh, and that's sort of the future. When we talk later on in, in, in other lectures, we're going to talk more about the advances in this. Con um, so, and then there are imaging definitions of brain injury, where you can have a brain injury but have a negative CT and a negative MRI. You can still have a brain injury, a significant brain injury. You, we would classify that as mild or some type, form of concussion, but it's still a brain injury. Then you can have a negative CT but a positive MRI. So even if the CT looks completely normal, you can have an, an abnormal MRI scan. And then obviously you can have positive in both. And then you have the main types of lesions that we think about. And I think about these in, in sort of order of severity where epidural hematoma uh, is, is life-threatening. But as many of you have seen, many of the senior folks have seen, um, these patients are in dire distress, but they immediately wake up postoperatively. So the, 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 the actual impact to the brain is less than it is for uh, contusion, subarachnoid hemorrhage. And, and I actually put subdural and, and DAI as the more severe forms, and, and I hope to convince you of that as we show you the data on that. 
Of course, there are repeated injuries that can occur um, with various kinds of, of sports injuries. Um, pathology. When, when one considers the classification of traumatic brain injury, one can also think about the particular types of pathology. What are the pathology of these various forms of injury? Well, the pathology varies depending on what happens. A concussion really does not have um, uh, an actual tissue damage evident on a CT or an MRI scan. But there is movement of the brain. There is electrical uh, disturbances of the brain that occur. Some people think that there's an acute depolarization or a seizure or some kind of spreading depression type of depolarization that occurs acutely. But there's no structural damage. And Dr. Havda will show you in, in animals this uh, in subsequent conferences. Then there can be a contusion in which there's actual hemorrhage into the brain tissue probably dis due to a disruption of small blood vessels. Diffuse axonal injury really is this, this the concept in which the brain twists and torques. It actually moves in an uh, antero-posterior grade and also in a rotational grade in order to injure the brain tissues, the deep axonal tissues, as well as the vessels that, that run long longitudinally. Uh, then there can be extraaxial lesions. These are the, the epidural and subdural hemorrhages, obviously the veins and the arteries. And then penetrating injury, which is usually a contusional type of injury, which can occur at low speed, like a knife through the head, or a high speed, like a, 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 a rifle bullet. So, the, so the, 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 the issue is, what happens with a concussion? Is there structural damage or not? There is clearly an electrical and a functional damage that occurs. And, the, and this is great, because the next slide actually goes to that exact point, where um, you can have a normal appearing CT and a normal appearing MRI scan, where the, the classic image is a T2, a T1, a T2, a flare, et cetera, does not show damage. But when you look at the more uh, advanced imaging modalities, such as uh, diffusion tensor imaging or tractography, you can actually see subtle changes in, in diffusion tensor imaging the fractional anisotropy or the actual tractography where they, they, they look at the tracks as they go through and they can correlate those subtle abnormalities those ad on the advanced brain imaging to neurocognitive dysfunction for long periods of time. So this is, this is the general point of a, the average, the, the basic MRI may be negative but you actually may still have a, a brain injury. And this is a, some work by Harvey Levin that shows in red and green and blue and all these nice colors the various tracks going through the brain that was developed through a diffusion, diffusion tensor imaging. And there are highlighted regions of the brain, especially in the corpus callosum, where there are subtle differences between the patients who are normal controls and those that had uh, mild concussion uh, or concussion. Uh, concussion can be defined various ways. This is important in sports medicine, and you may be exposed to this as a neurosurgeon where people come to you and, and they come to you, you know, your, your, your daughter's soccer team, did she have a concussion? And they come to you because you're the brain expert. So you have to understand that there are really a classic form, uh, really propo uh, proposed by Dr. Cantu originally, of grades of concussion, grade one concussion, grade two concussion, grade three concussion. And each of these has various forms of duration of loss of consciousness, with grade three being the most severe, loss of consciousness greater than five minutes, and there are actually rules to return to play, or at least recommendations for returning to play, where if you have a grade three concussion, you should wait, wait at least one month before returning to play, if you're symptomatic, um, uh, for one week 